I want to say praise the Lord, everybody. Certainly we do give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. I think of the scripture that says, O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Truly, this is a glorious day, and this is the day. And we uh, praise God and give him thanks for all that he has done and everything that he is doing to bless us even in these times. Uh, we want to certainly go before the Lord in prayer, but I want to introduce myself, uh, Pastor Frankie L. Quinn, Sr., uh, Senior Pastor of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, and I want to thank God for my lovely wife, Lady Tracy Quinn, and all of our leadership that is here at this particular assembly, and all of our members. Uh, we are a church that has particular goals, church that has vision and we want to uh, you to come and join us come and join us on Sundays uh, between the hours of 9 a.m. to uh, 10 30 and we have another service at 11 a.m. to 12 30 p.m. so we've gone to this two-tier service uh, to accommodate our church as we reopen up during this pandemic. But uh, we want you to come and be a part of us. Uh, we are vision is to be a caring fellowship, leading souls to Christ, strengthening families and members, equipping and making disciples, equipping them for service and community ministry. Also too, uh, we have a purpose. Our purpose is to promote the gospel, to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ through effective, responsible ministry and intentional, creative, dynamic fellowship. We certainly do uh, pray for each and every soul uh, in this world that uh, God will continue to bless, that God will continue to strengthen uh, those that call upon the name of Jesus. And as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, certainly do we want to remember our country and the things that are going on in it, uh, that uh, the Lord will have mercy, um, that the Lord will show forth his grace. We have to remember that um, God respects the will of man. In other words, when in the book of Genesis, it talks about how God gave dominion, gave man dominion upon this earth. And God gave man the rule over this earth, and therefore uh, he is to rule it, or she, or he, man, mankind, are to rule it with uh, a sense of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, purpose, uh, according to God's will, according to God's laws. And uh, man has gotten away from it laws of God and the purposes of God. That's why you see all the chaos uh, that you see going on in the world today. But let us pray. He said, if my people that were called by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then will I hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins and I'll heal their land. So let us pray one for another that the will of God will be accomplished, that his purposes will be achieved, and let us pray that God will strengthen us even in these last and evil days. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly do thank you uh, for your goodness and your mercy, your love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together one more time to be in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your strength, your grace, your mercy, your love and your kindness that you have shown toward each and every one of us. We pray, Lord, that your anointing, let it arise, let it shine forth, even in these days. Let your grace and your mercy and your strength, Lord, be made manifest. Let it be known in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you take charge of our Bible study on tonight, that you send forth a word of strength and encouragement and power, Send forth a word of clarity, Lord, in the name of Jesus. 
And Lord, help us, Lord. Help us to be that voice that is crying in the wilderness to declare and to ask men, women, and children, boys and girls, to make their path straight unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless us, Lord, to be that voice that is crying in the wilderness. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Father, we thank you and praise you, give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord again, everybody. Thank you, Lord. We certainly do thank God, amen, for how he has blessed us and kept us even until this very hour. We certainly do thank God for his strength, his mercy, and his blessings that he has bestowed upon us. Amen. And um, we have already had prayer, and we uh, certainly do acknowledge uh, all those that do have prayer requests. Praise the Lord. Amen. We, we certainly do thank God for uh, his merciful, merciful uh, grace and his merciful strength and his merciful power. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So we want to uh, go quickly into the word of God. Amen. And um, tonight we want to, uh, you to go with us to the book of St. Luke. St. Luke chapter number four. St. Luke chapter number four. Amen. St. Luke, the book of St. Luke chapter number four. And um, my, our subject tonight, we want to talk about true freedom. Amen. Um, a lot of people want to be free and People want freedom, uh, but true freedom is in Jesus Christ. True freedom is in the Lord. And we're going to talk about that on tonight um, in, out of the book of St. Luke. Uh, I want to begin reading uh, verses of scripture out of that book, uh, St. Luke chapter number four, verse 14. And it says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in the synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And there, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him a book of the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah, was the book of Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Verse 18, it says, And the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And verse number 20, and it says, and he closed the book and he gave it to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of them that were in the synagogue was fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear witness, and all bear him witness and wondered at the glorious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? So I read to you uh, verses, uh, Luke chapter number four, verses 14 through uh, verse 22. And uh, we're talking tonight about true freedom. And this particular scripture, this particular scripture that we're uh, 
going to get into tonight. It deals with Jesus and his assignment. His Jesus and his assignment. His assignment as a liberator. His assignment as a deliverer. Notice uh, verse 14. And it says, And Jesus, when he returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region thereabout. And this particular scripture is early on in Jesus' ministry. Jesus had just started his ministry. He had just gotten filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, drove him into the wilderness. And there he fasted 40 days and, and, and 40 nights. And then the scripture says, afterward, he was a hunger. And uh, uh, the enemy, the devil, had came and tempted him. And he tempted him with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And Jesus overcame each temptation uh, through the obedience or quoting the word of God. You can overcome temptation through your obedience to the word of God. And that's what Jesus did. He's proving uh, that, that, that he himself was the Messiah, the anointed king, priest, and prophet. So after uh, that was over, that's where we pick up in verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Now notice it's still focusing in on the Spirit of the Lord that is upon Jesus. The Jesus, Jesus was anointed. And, and here we see that Jesus is anointed as God's prophet. He's going to begin to prophesy even about his own ministry. So we see here, he said, he returned in the spirit to Galilee and went there. There went out fame throughout all the region thereabout. And he taught in the synagogues, uh, being glorified of all. So when it talks about Jesus' fame going out, uh, you got to realize they didn't have internet. They didn't have TV. You know, they didn't have uh, 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 things such as that. So his fame went out by word of mouth. Everybody just talked about uh, this, this anointed, this anointed man of God that just came on the scene preaching and teaching the word of God. So, so his fame went out because Jesus taught some things that uh, in such a great depth that other people uh, didn't have. He taught, he taught things that even the, the rabbis that were old and wise of that day didn't have the wisdom that was placed in Jesus. And Jesus himself was able to open up the word of God. Why? Because him, he himself is the word of God. He was the word made flesh, the Bible says, and dwelt among us. So, so, so Jesus then, he begins to, to preach. He begins to teach. And, 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 and the fame of him went out throughout all the land. And, and notice, verse 16, he says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. So Jesus now has going back to his own homeland, where he was brought up, where he was raised, where he literally spent uh, the first 30 years of his life. He spent 30 years of his life in Nazareth. And he spent the, uh, the, the rest of his life, which accumulated, to another three and a half years just teaching and preaching around about his homeland. So we notice he went uh, back to Nazareth and, uh, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue uh, on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day was the day of rest. It began, the Sabbath day began at Friday at 6 p.m. and ended Saturday at 6 p.m. And that was a day of rest. The Sabbath, as you remember, was uh, God uh, made uh, and created the heavens and the earth and everything there was in. He created everything in six days. He made man even on the, the sixth day. 
And the Bible says on the seventh day, God sanctified it and rested on that seventh day. And, and that was a day that was set apart, set apart uh, for people to worship God, set apart for people uh, not to uh, exact their own labor. Uh, stores would be closed, no selling in the marketplace. Uh, people uh, would not even do work around their house. That was a time set apart for God where people meditated on the word of God. They read uh, the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible. Uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They read the Torah, and, and they also read out of the prophets. Uh, the New Testament wasn't around at that time um, uh, when God instituted the Sabbath because the New Testament starts off with the life of Jesus. So we see here, but my point is with the Sabbath, it was sanctified. It was a day of rest, a day of holiness, a day of reading the scriptures, a day of, of commemorating and remembering God, a day of worshiping God, giving him glory and honor for all that he has done, a day of rest. So uh, on that particular day, uh, on the Sabbath day, which was, uh, uh, like I said, uh, between 6 uh, p.m. on Friday, and 6 p.m. on Saturday. That's when it ended. Uh, Jesus went in to the synagogue, as was the custom. The synagogue was a church, as we would call it today. So he went in uh, to read the scriptures. And by now, uh, it's beautiful that uh, they had recognized Jesus as being a minister. They recognized him uh, being one who was anointed, an anointed, uh, if you allow me to say it, rabbi, because they called him master in the scriptures. And that means that he was a teacher of the word of God. So Jesus had, had, had matriculated and, 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 and uh, received that title. Uh, a lot of people, uh, uh, to me that's exciting because uh, it, it expresses the fact that Jesus was, was held in confidence in ministry. That Jesus was a minister of what? A minister of the word of God. Thank you, Lord. So we see here then, uh, and uh, he came to Nazareth, as was his custom on the Sabbath. He stood up to read. Uh, every time they uh, were to read the word of God, that's why we practice it uh, in, uh, here at our own church uh, they stood up for it to read. It's a sign of reverence to the word, to the word of God, a reverence to God. We should always reverence God. We should always honor God. We should always, always uh, uh, give God the respect that he is due. Because if you respect God, God will respect you. And people who don't respect God, uh, they don't get the respect from God, if you allow me to say it that way, uh, God deals with people accordingly. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So we see here, we see here then, verse 16, he said, he came to Nazareth where he stood up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood to read. He begins to read. And there was delivered unto him, notice what it says, the book of the prophet Isaiah. Uh, he actually read from the book of Isaiah, uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 61. And I want to just go over there real quick because some of the language uh, there is different uh, from what we just read. Uh, Isaiah 61. And uh, in that particular book, Isaiah 61, Jesus says, uh, Isaiah 61, verse 1, this is where he was reading. This is the scroll that was given unto him. And uh, at that day, we didn't have Bibles like we have today with particular pages. They had scrolls. And uh, it was delivered him a scroll. And 
There was a book on one end and the other end, and they opened it up. They rolled it out until where he came to this particular verse, in which Jesus read in Hebrew. He read this in Hebrew. The, the, the Bible, as we call it, was written uh, originally in Hebrew. So we see here then, he says, And the Spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Now I want to say this, that, that Jesus, as you see in that second verse, Jesus started, he read uh, two verses, if you allow me to say it. He read the first verse, and he read partial of the second verse. He stopped that to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord in verse number two. And he left off, he didn't read where it says, and the vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Because uh, that first verse there, uh, beginning with uh, Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 2, uh, that, that part B of that verse, where it talks about vengeance, that's going to happen after Jesus return. It's not, it's not going on now. So what Jesus read is, is awesome. What Jesus read was his current day assignment. That's Jesus, that first verse, to, to in the second verse, part A, it relates to Jesus' current day assignment. And notice what it said. He said, and the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And that, that spirit, which he's referring to, is his anointing. That Jesus is anointed. He's anointed to be the savior of of the world. He's anointed to save those that put their confidence and trust in him. And, and that, that, that verse, uh, I'm going back over to verse uh, Luke chapter uh, number uh, chapter 4 verse 18. It says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And, and it relates to Jesus' assignment. He's anointed He's the anointed priest. He's the anointed prophet. And he's the anointed king. Uh, uh, nobody else carries those three anointings. And Jesus is saying that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Meaning that God has anointed me to carry out my assignment. All I need what? To be the savior of the world. To give my life as a ransom for many to die on the cross, amen, to be the savior of the world. Now, I just want to go over here with me, go, uh, uh, Isaiah, hallelujah, Isaiah 42. And I just want to read this verse of scripture to you, Isaiah 42, beginning at verse number one. And Isaiah 42 is dealing with the suffering servant. It talks about Jesus as being the suffering servant. And, and notice uh, Isaiah 42 and verse number one. Notice what it says. It says, Behold my servant in whom I uphold mine elect. See, Jesus was, he was elected, meaning that he was chosen. Hallelujah. Notice what it says. Whom I, mine elect in whom my soul delighted. I have put my spirit upon him, meaning I have anointed him. Uh, he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. And that word judgment to the Gentiles there, it literally means the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it is the power of God 
unto salvation. And the gospel of Jesus Christ deals with his death, burial, and his resurrection. And when it's talking about his, uh, the, the judgment uh, of the Gentiles, it's talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ, wherein uh, 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 sin is going to be judged. The Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So sin is being judged, but those that accept Jesus as their Savior will be saved. That's part of the judgment of God. That, that if, if you repent of your sins and put your trust in Jesus, you can and will be saved. That's, that's all contained in the judgment of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? So notice, notice what it's saying. Hallelujah. Verse number two. It says, he shall not cry, nor lift up, uh, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street, meaning that he won't murmur and complain uh, when it came time for him to be crucified. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flex shall he not quench. Uh, he shall bring forth judgment unto truth, meaning that he's going to be gentle. He's going to be meek and lowly, that he's going to bring about salvation to all that call upon his name, that he won't get upset with you. He won't get angry with you. Uh, he'll save your soul. That's what that means. Uh, in other words, he'll be the Lamb of God. Now notice, this is what we're after here in this next verse. And he says, he shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law. Now, uh, that verse four there, notice, and he says, he shall not fail nor be discouraged. Uh, uh, Jesus in his mission and his assignment is saying that he shall not fail in his mission or his assignment that he has been anointed for. In other words, everybody that humbles themselves and repents of their sin and put their trust in Jesus, they shall be saved. They shall be delivered. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it because Jesus gave his life as a ransom for you and I. He accomplished the purpose. When he was dying on the cross, he said, it is finished. Hallelujah. Meaning that he did everything that was necessary to bring about salvation, to bring about deliverance. Why? Because he was anointed. And the scripture here in that verse 42, uh, it says, and he shall not fail nor be discouraged. No matter, no matter what obstacles he came up against, he endured it. Yeah, no matter what pain uh, how they beat him, how, how they hung him on that tree, no matter how much humiliation he went through, no matter how they tried to uh, get him to come down from the cross, how they tried to provoke him to call legions of angels to come and fight for him, Jesus stayed true to his assignment. Jesus stayed true to his purpose. My God, Jesus stayed true to what he was going to, what he was anointed to do. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. My God, that should bring you some great joy. Yes. Thank you, Lord, because you can put your confidence in Jesus. You can build your hopes uh, upon Jesus Christ. And when it comes down to salvation, when it comes down to deliverance, Jesus paid that price. And, and he alone has brought salvation to you and I. The Bible says that there is no other name given unto heaven whereby men must be saved other than Jesus Christ. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And now, let's go back. Thank you, Lord. Let's go back. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go back over to the book of uh, uh, Luke, uh, chapter number 4 and verse 18. Notice, he said, and the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. 
Amen? Meaning that God's spirit is upon me. I've been empowered. I'm anointed. I've been crowned for this. For this cause came I into the world to give my life as a ransom for many. Notice, because he hath anointed me. Now this is Jesus' assignment. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So Jesus here, this particular anointing, if you want to, if you want to categorize it, he is anointed here as the prophet because he's going, he's preaching about himself. Amen. He's prophesying about his mission. He's prophesying about his assignment. And Jesus is a true prophet. Uh, hey, hey, hallelujah. He is the prophet. Amen. Uh, he said everybody that came before me were thieves and robbers. Amen. They, they, they prophesied about this thing, but they couldn't, they, they couldn't get the job done like I can get the job done. <laughs> hallelujah. So, so notice, notice what Jesus said. He said, uh, the, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And that's the judgment that we've talked about. The judgment is the gospel of Jesus Christ, wherein all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but there's faith in Jesus. If you repent of your sins and put your confidence in Jesus, you shall be saved. That's why the Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. And that's the gospel. Amen? Which is the power of God unto salvation. Notice, that gospel comes to those that are poor. Amen? In other words, that are meek and lowly, that are destitute, that those that need help. You, in order to receive this gospel, you've got to know that you need help. Amen? You've got to know that, Lord, I've come short. I've fallen short, and I need your help. The scripture says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall be uh, called, because they shall be comforted. Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Amen? So notice what he said. He said, he said, uh, Preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to them, uh, to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, I don't want to go through and itemize uh, what Jesus, uh, his assignment was, but, 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 it's all encapsulated in that 18th and 19th verse. But I want to bring your mind back uh, to that 19th verse where it says to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And remember in the book of uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 61, that second verse, that part A, uh, this is where Jesus stopped. That part B is where uh, uh, he, he didn't read that part because that part is going to be fulfilled in later time when he comes back and establishes his kingdom. Amen? So, so, so what is so significant about verse 18 and verse 19, it gives us the ministry of Jesus as, as far as what he is doing right now. Amen. What, what his assignment is right now. Hallelujah. And it lets us know right now, right now, Jesus is anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. Jesus is anointed to heal your broken heart. Uh, he's anointed to do that right now. Hallelujah. Right now, he can heal your broken heart. Right now. Notice, uh, uh, he, he preaches deliverance to the captives. Those that uh, are captivated by, by sin, by shame. Uh, those that are captivated by their own guilt and pain. Uh, both physical and psychological. 
Jesus can free you from your captivity. Amen? Hey, glory. And notice, and the recovering of sight to the blind. Those that are spiritually blind, Jesus can open your blinded eyes and give you sight so that you can be able to see that the way of God is right. Uh, people who are born in sin, as we all are born in sin, spiritually we walk around in darkness. Amen? Hallelujah. But, but when we receive Jesus, who the Bible describes as the light of the world, hallelujah, Jesus says he is the light of the world. That, that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. What that means is, is that, uh, well, you ever hear, when you go to a store, they say one size fits all, and that's Jesus. One size fits all. Uh, you don't need another savior. You don't need another deliverer. All you need is Jesus. Amen? No matter who you are, tall, short, wide, skinny, uh, that not. Hallelujah. Uh, black, blue, brown, uh, all you need is Jesus. Uh, one size fits all. So that's what that means. Thank you, Lord. So he says he's the light of the world. Thank you, Lord. He lighteth everybody that cometh into the world. Now notice, uh, uh, he preached deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Those that, that have gone through pain and suffering, Thank you, Lord, and, and held uh, bound by their pain and their suffering. Uh, 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 Jesus set you free from that. Thank you, Lord. There's a lot of things uh, that people have done in their past. And, and through their past, they, they've been real shameful, hurtful. And, and, and if you allow it, your past can stop you from moving forward because you've been so bruised by it. Thank you, Lord. Jesus he restores you. He renews you hallelujah, and frees you from your bruises of your past life. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. What an awesome Savior. What an awesome deliverer. Notice what it says. To set free at liberty them that are bruised. Now notice verse 19. Uh, verse 19, it says, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And notice then, the Bible says, verse 19, verse 20, and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all of them, when, when he had closed the book, notice he was standing up reading. Uh, when, they, when, when, when the priest or the teacher is reading, they, they stand up. When they begin to teach, they sit down. That's why everybody's eyes was on them, because Jesus was about to teach. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, God, I wish I was there. <laughs> Notice what he says. And he closed the book, and he gave it to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Everybody's eyes was on Jesus. Why? Because they wanted to hear what he was going to say. Now, verse 21 is key. Verse 21 is key to our lesson. Notice what it says. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And earlier we talked about that Verse 18 in Luke talks about Jesus' assignment. It talks about his mission, his purpose. And then verse 19, it talks about the year of Jubilee. It talks about the year of Jubilee. And Jesus said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So what Jesus was proclaiming to them, which, which would astonish them, which would have caused them to, 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 to stand on their head, so to speak, because he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. 
And that verse 19 is what Jesus was referring to, 18 and 19, but especially 19 is what he was referring to, that to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus was, they would have recognized that phrase, Jesus' audience, the Jews, they would have recognized that as the year of Jubilee. And the power of the year of Jubilee, it, it represents every 50 years, every 50 years in the year of Jubilee, and it occurred on the Sabbath day. So 50 years of Sabbaths, and then on the, the, the 50th year of the Sabbath day, they were to count every, from, they were to count every seven years would be one cycle, and, and, and until they got to seven cycles, which ended up as 49 years. And, and on the 49th year, they were to prepare themselves uh, for the 50th year of, of, of Jubilee, which means that, that they, notice it happened on the Sabbath. So we all already know that the Sabbath represents a day of rest. Amen? And, and, and the year of Jubilee is talked about in the book of Leviticus. We won't go there. Leviticus chapter 25. And when you get a chance, read verse number 10. But I just want to itemize this real quick because I want to bring out some other points how Jesus was equating this to himself. Uh, on the, on the, uh, the year of of Jubilee, which happened every 50 years, that the children of Israel, it began on the Day of Atonement. And that Day of Atonement was the day which was a high holy day, wherein uh, the, the high priest would go into the temple and offer up a sacrifice for the sins of the people. And he would do that once a year. And, and uh, he would offer up sacrifices for the people. The people would ask God for forgiveness of, of anything that they have done because it was uh, said that uh, on that particular day, uh, God would judge his people who would live and who would die based on their asking of him for forgiveness. So forgiveness is key. Forgive, asking for forgiveness is, is crucial. That's why the gospel hinges on forgiveness. When the Bible says repent ye, uh, the, that means to ask God to forgive you, to turn from the ways and the things that you have done. If an individual doesn't repent, God can't show mercy. If an individual doesn't repent, God can't show him this grace. Even in what we call the Lord's Prayer, the Bible says, uh, um, uh, uh, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Notice, he says, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Notice that, that forgiveness is there. Uh, God wants you to forgive uh, uh, others in order for him to forgive you. If you don't forgive other people that have wronged you, your God won't forgive you of your wrongs. So, so forgiveness is key. That's why the Day of Atonement, the Bible calls it, or the Jews call it Yom Kippur, uh, uh, which means a Day of Atonement. And, and upon this uh, year of Jubilee, they also returned every 50 years. They uh, 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 freed the slaves. Everybody that, that owned slaves, the Hebrews, they, they set them free. Everybody that owed a debt, they allowed, they, they forgave them of their debt. Notice, hallelujah, and everybody, thank you, Lord, that, 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 that nobody own land because all the land belonged to God. God gave the children of Israel's portions of land so that they could have. 
But if they fell into debt, other people can take possession of their land. But on the year of Jubilee, they had to give that land back to the family. And, and that uh, established a balanced economy that, that, they, that, that people wouldn't rise above other people by accumulating land. And, and God, he restored equity to the people. He, he, he restored justice to the people. And doesn't that just sound like Jesus? Jesus, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he restores, amen, he restores justice to you. He restores fairness unto you, amen. He, he restores equity unto you. He gives you your life back. That which the enemy has stole, Jesus restores. That which the enemy takes away, Jesus gives back. Hallelujah. That, and, and notice, thank you, Lord, that, 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 that the year of Jubilee was based on forgiveness. And when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, God forgives you. Amen. For all of your filth, all of your sin. Hallelujah. For, for, and not only that, for the sins that, that you uh, 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 have, come, uh, I'm going to say it this way. You were born in sin, <laughs> thank you, Lord. You haven't sinned after the way Adam had done, but because of your nature, God forgives you. Thank you, Lord. People who are born into this world, uh, the Bible says God is angry with, with those that come into this world. Why? Because of sin. But, but what, what stops God from cashing in on people is the grace and the mercy that is tied up in Jesus. And he gives people a space to repent. God gives people a chance uh, to turn and put their trust in him. Hallelujah. So, so, so that's why the Bible talks about the grace of God. The grace of God has appeared unto all men, teaching us uh, that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live righteously and soberly down here in this present world. And the grace of God is Jesus Christ. He's God's grace. Amen. And because uh, 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 the grace of God, uh, God can have mercy upon you. Hallelujah. And once God shows you mercy, he can, he can dwell with you peacefully. Thank you. Number I said, God is angry with the wicked. God was angry with the sinner. But until they accept the grace of Jesus, Hallelujah. They ask for God's grace, which is in Jesus Christ. In other words, they accept Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. Then God can show you mercy. A grace and mercy is God's unmerited favor. Hallelujah. You don't earn it. It's something that's done for you by God. You can't buy it. Hallelujah. Why? Because it's freely given. Hallelujah. All you got to do is repent. All you got to do is ask God. Hallelujah. Lord, help me. Lord, deliver me. Thank Lord, strengthen me. Uh, all you got to do is confess that Jesus is the Christ. All you got to do is confess that, Lord, I'm a sinner needing to be saved by grace. And that's what the scripture means. Hallelujah. It's for saints and sinners. When the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. That's just not for saints. Uh, that's for sinners also. And that come boldly means you can come with confidence. Hallelujah. Come with confidence. Confidence in what? Confidence in the fact that Jesus died, rose again for your sins. That the Bible said in, in Isaiah 41, uh, it said that he shall not fail. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you can come with confidence that Jesus is the Christ. You can come with confidence that Jesus is the Messiah and that he did die for your sins, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, that no man can come to the Father but by Jesus. You can have that kind of confidence trusting in the Lord. And when you trust like that and believe like that, the Bible says, come boldly to the throne. Uh, you're a sinner straight up, uh, knowing that you need salvation. You can be in just junk, you're a whole bottle of Jack Daniels. 
Uh, it doesn't matter. Coming out the whole house, the dope house. God, just, just finish lying, stealing, and cussing. Thank you, Lord. But if you come to Jesus, just asking for forgiveness. He said, come boldly to the throne of grace. Notice that you might obtain mercy. Uh, God wants to extend his mercy. Uh, that you might obtain mercy and find the grace that you need uh, to help you in your time of trouble. Uh, who wouldn't serve a savior like that? Yeah. Yeah, hallelujah, my God. So, so, so we see here there, we're talking about freedom. Jesus being that, he, 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 prof he, he professed that he himself was the Jubilee, uh, the year of Jubilee. And remember, the year of Jubilee represented freedom. Uh, uh, the slaves were set free. Huh? Every 50 years, the slaves were set free. Debts were set free. Uh, uh, debts were forgiven. Thank you, Lord. And, and people were restored whole so that they would be given another chance. Doesn't that sound like Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, 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 so here we see them. They were uh, liberated from their sins. The debt of sin was liberated. And notice, he would, he would liberate them from sin. And notice, a time, it was also the Sabbath. Lord over the Sabbath. Meaning that he was saying that the Sabbath was, was made for me. The Sabbath was a type of shadow of what I would give you. I would give you rest from your sinful habits. I'd give you rest from the hand of the enemy being on your neck, not trying to choke you out. <laughs> he said, I'll give you rest if you put your trust in me. Hallelujah, glory. Hallelujah, I'll give you rest. Huh? And he said, I'll give you peace. Huh? Now that the world give, give I unto you. He said, my peace give I unto you. Amen. The peace that is in Jesus. He's anointed, hallelujah, to give you rest. He's anointed to give you peace. Uh, he's anointed to give you joy. Uh, not just any kind of joy. He says, my joy I give unto you. Uh, hallelujah. The joy of Jesus abiding in us through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now notice. He said, now, uh, when Jesus would come, it would be a time of deliverance. When, when the year of Jubilee would come, people would get excited. They would blow the ram's horn. Amen? And, and people would get excited because it was a year of, 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 of celebration. It was a year of trusting and depending on God. So it was a year of deliverance. And it was a year of restoration. People would, would get restored. They would get uh, their property back. They would have their debts forgiven. Uh, the families would come back together again. Hallelujah. It was a time of rejoicing. And I want to say this. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That, that in the year of Jubilee, on that 48th year, they had to stop tilling the ground. They had to stop tilling the land and, and they couldn't sow any seed and they couldn't reap anything that grew on the land for a space of two years. And in uh, from uh, uh, year 48 and year 49, and then they were able to go back to it, I believe, uh, in year 50. But this is what I want to bring out. Those two years where they weren't able to reap nothing or to sow nothing in that year 47 God would make sure that if they kept his commandments that he would give them an abundant supply that would last them for those two years hallelujah and, and, and that was showing that, 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 that I'm God Hallelujah. And I, and, and I will take care of those that, that set their face to, to honor and keep my commandments, that, that reverence me. In other words, that let them know that, that Lord, you are our, our God.
that you are our choice, that you are our deliverer. Lord, we depend on you. That's, that's like when we give our tithes and our offering. When we give tithes and offering, it's, it's in commemoration of, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I honor you. And if we give our tithes and our offerings in that type of faith, what did God say? He said, I will rebuke the devourer. Uh, I'll open you up uh, the windows of heaven and I'll pour you out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. And, and, and that's an act of faith. Amen. Believing in God. That's what the Bible says. We got to walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. So, so, so in the year of Jubilee, those, those, those latter two years, they didn't reap nothing. They didn't sow nothing. But God had already provided for them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, to last them those two years in between. My God. And, 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 and the reason why I bring that out is, is because uh, uh, it showed that God, uh, that, that they trusted in the Lord. Amen. Anytime you come to Jesus, you have to bring him a sacrifice. And what I mean by that is, hallelujah, you got to present your body uh, as a sacrifice unto the Lord, saying, Lord, I trust you. Amen. Lord, I believe on you. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm committing my life into your hand. And if you come with that kind of faith, uh, and glory, God will open up the windows of heaven. God will bless you tremendously. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. That don't lead to your own understanding. Just acknowledge him. Huh? Just acknowledge him. Let's acknowledge him in all your ways. In everything that you do, just acknowledge him. Huh? God just wants to be acknowledged so he can show his mighty power. So he can show his mighty acts. He said, just acknowledge me in all your ways. Then he said, I'll direct your path. I'll, I'll show you where to go. I'll tell you what to do. And if you do what God says do, you shall be like that tree. Uh, planted by the rivers of water. Hallelujah. And nothing shall wither. And whatever you do, it shall prosper. Yeah, hallelujah. So we see here then. Thank you, Lord. We're talking about Jubilee. And, and Jesus, he represented, amen, that Jubilee. And, and I'm almost finished here. Thank you, Lord. We've got to do a good time. Thank you. Hey, Lord. Notice the scripture then. I'm going to go to uh, verse 18. Just read it. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Jesus' assignment. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Power comes through the gospel. Amen. And it reaches those that are poor in spirit. A broken and a contrite heart. He said, I will no wise despise. He has sent me to heal everybody that has a broken heart. Hallelujah. If you don't have a broken heart now, you're going to have one sooner or later. <laughs> but, but there's help. Amen. Uh, if you come to Jesus, he'll heal your broken heart. Hallelujah. I'm sure. Thank you, Lord. Growing up, people have had, had romances and, and, and fell in love and had their little heart broke. Hallelujah. But, but Jesus is a heart fixer. <laughs> he's, a heart, he's a heart fixer. Notice. Notice. Notice what he said. And the recovering of soul. Uh, to, to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captive. And recovering of sight to the blind. Notice. Freedom. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Notice verse 19. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And that's the, the day of Jubilee. Third, verse 21. Jesus said, These, this day, huh? this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Huh? He was saying and letting the people know that I am God's a, 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 a Messiah. That I am God's Man, if you allow me to say it that way. 
I have been sent here to heal you, to deliver you, and to set you free. I'm here as I'm proclaiming that I am the year of Jubilee. Hallelujah. To set you free. So notice then, and, and all bear him witness and wonder at the glorious words which proceeded out of his mouth. So I wish I was there what, and to hear what Jesus actually taught them. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost was there. Hallelujah. But I wish I was there to hear the words. And, and notice, they said they all bear him witness and wondered at the glorious words. <laughs> Hallelujah. Which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, they were so astonished. They said, is this not Joseph? Amen. Joseph's his son. Thank you, Lord. They were like, they were like listening to Jesus. It was like, man, isn't it Joseph's son, the carpenter? Where, where have he heard? Where, where have he learned such things? Amen. Jesus is a wonder. Hallelujah. They didn't recognize him as the Messiah. So the Bible says, as many as received him, to them gave he power. Amen. You got to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior to receive his power. You got to, you got to receive Jesus to allow his anointed works to operate in your life. If you just say, Lord, I receive you into my life. I believe that you're the one that came and died and gave your life as a ransom. Hallelujah. And if you believe that and repent of all your sins, repentance means to turn. Amen. Say, I'm, the direction that I'm going in is all wrong. I need to find a new and living way. And, and if you turn from your old behaviors and accept Jesus, he will save you. Hallelujah. Because he didn't fail. <laughs> you know, I, I'm done. I'm done. But you know how you know he didn't fail? Because he, 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 he sat out at the right hand of God and he, and he sent back the promise of the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. He told him, I'm going to go away, uh, but I'm going to send you another comforter. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that's the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, so that's the assurance that we have that Jesus didn't fail. <laughs> hey, that's the assurance that all of his word is true. Hallelujah, that Jesus is a true prophet. You can put your confidence in him. And the Bible says that if you repent, get baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins, you too can be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So we thank God for the Bible study on tonight. Let us pray. Gracious Father, well, we ask you to strengthen us, continue to bless us, give us what we need for this hour. Lord, we thank you for being our jubilee. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Amen. We certainly do thank God for each and every one of you that have tuned in to us, on us, with us tonight. Amen. We certainly do praise God for all of his wonderful acts that he has shown toward the children of men. Thank you, Lord. And we want to say this. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. We want to say this. Come out, be with us on, on Sunday at, at 9 o'clock. Amen. In our morning glory service from 9 to 1030. Thank you, Lord. And then uh, other half of the congregation come back. Come be with us at 11 o'clock. Thank you, Lord, for our morning worship. And both services are the same, same message, amen, uh, same spirit, same God, hallelujah. We certainly do thank God uh, for our life, health, portion, and strength. Continue to pray one for another. And if you're looking for true freedom, true freedom is in Jesus. Uh, pray for us as we pray for you in Jesus' name, amen.